You know, it's kind of weird how I haven't actually reviewed this film yet, despite how long it's already been released. Anyway, what's good? It's a uh, boy do the views, and today we're going to be reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I swear I reviewed this film, but for some reason I don't see it on my channel. So I guess that is my first review of it. And it's a 2018 American computer animated superhero film featuring the Marvel comic character Miles Morales, aka Spider-Man, produced by Columbia Pictures and Sony Pictures Animation in association with Marvel and distributed by Sony Pictures releasing. It is the first animated feature film in the Spider-Man franchise and is set in a shared multiverse called the Spider-Verse, which has alternative universes. The film was directed by Bob Perchetti, Peter Ramsey and Rodney Rotterman from a screenplay by Phil Lord and Rodney Rotterman and a story by Phil Lord himself. And it stars the voices of Shami Kamor as Miles Morales, Jake Johnson as Peter Parker, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy um, or Spider-Gwen, Marashalaya Ali, Brian Tyne Henry, Leah Lely Tolman, Luna Lauren Rellos, John Mallory, Kimoko Glenn, Nicholas Cage, and Levi Shariba. And what is this film all about? Well, after gaining superpowers from a spider bite, Miles Morales protects the city as Spider Man. Soon he meets alternative multiverses of himself and gets entangled in an epic battle to save the multiverse. And plans for an animated film. Um, were leaked in 2014 and announced in 2015 and the directors wanted the film to have a unique style combining Sony Pictures image works computer animated pipeline with traditional hand-drawn comic book techniques inspired by the works of Miles Morales creator co-creator Sarah Pichel and the film required up to 140 animators the largest crew used by Sony Pictures Animation and the film was dedicated to the memories of the creators of Spider-Man Stanley and Steve Dicto who both died in 2018 and the film had a world premiere at the Regency Village Theatre in LA on December 1st 2018 and was practically released in the US on December 14th and it grossed over 375 million against a budget of 90 million and it received praise for its animation, story, characters, voice acting, humour and soundtrack and won numerous awards including the best animated feature at the Academy Awards, Annie Awards and the Golden Globe Awards or respectively and it became the first non-Disney or Pixar film to win an Oscar for best animated feature since Rango 2011 as well as the first non-Disney Pixar film since Happy Feet to win that award when a Pixar or film was also in competition against the award. A sequel is in development and is planning to be released in 2022. And what do I think about this film? Well, let me tell you how I initially saw this film. I really didn't think much about it, you know. When I saw I saw like little bits and pieces of it and I don't know, I didn't really see the trailer. I never I actually just saw images of like the poster and to be honest with you when I heard about it, I never really thought too much about it. I was like Spider-Verse, what the heck is that? You know? They're making an animated Marvel film, like I, I just I wasn't really thinking too much about it. And especially with Sony's like disaster of the emoji movie, I was like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. But then I remember watching Venom and I saw that end credit sequence of this film and I was blown away by the art style you know the art style and that's a what that is the main like positive to take from this film it's the visual look of this film like I have never seen an animated film look like this you know like it's a CGI but the way it's rendered looks like a comic book and it has that 2D feel to it you know it's very toony at times you know and Sony do a good job at really making their 3D animations look like 2D but for this one they did a very good job making it look more comic booky. like they have like the panels and like because it's animation they can get away with it instead of like if this was live action it would look corny and stupid and I just thought wow they, they did a fantastic job you know and just some of like the grand visuals and like dude like they just look they look so good and they just the colors just pop and they look vibrant and amazing you know Miles Morales is like I love his design like I, okay like 
uh, Black Panther was a good film because it, it was it's nice to watch a film where the main character looks like me in a way. But this dude looks like me, you know. Like I, when I saw this film, I was like, oh my god, this kid looks almost like me, you know, from the hairstyle to everything. I was just like, I, it felt like I was looking in a mirror in a way, and I I just thought, oh my god, like he looks just like me, and it just. I don't know, I think I related to this film more and how people, like, how a lot of black people thought that Black Panther was, you know, like, oh my god, it's this grand thing. This this film was my Black Panther in a way. This was like, holy moly, I can really see myself, like, in this role in a way. And I, I was I was hyped and I, I, I was just like, whoa. I actually thought it was a better film than Black Panther, in my opinion, you know. Miles Morales is really fun and just a lovable character and... In my opinion, out of all like the main Spider-Men, the Spider-Guys in like the modern Spider-Man movies, I feel like he's my favorite like main Spider-Man dude in a way. Like he's just so cool and just slick and just a likable dude. And Peter Parker, who's obviously in this film, um, Peter B. Parker is his name. And um, he is like a middle-aged man now. Like he's reaching middle age. And in his universe, he's been Spider-Man, done it all, and, you know, like, I kind of like his kind of, like, his chemistry with Miles in a way. It kind of, it's this kind of big brother, little brother um, vibe, and it's really cool, and I just really like that those two together, like, they work off one another so well. Like, Peter is just such a, f he's really interesting. He's a very different Peter Parker, you know. I kind of feel like he's the Peter Parker... He kind of reminds me of like Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker at times, you know, he kind of has that, those elements of him, you know, like that kind of like, um, just not giving a damn in a way about stuff. I, I feel like it's very similar to that one. Gwen Stacy and Spider-Woman is also really cool as well. I, I think she's just so badass and just likable and I, I really like that character. All the other characters are great, but in my personal opinion, the characters who just, for me, who steal the show are Penny Parker, Peter Porker, and Spider Noir. I really like those three, you know, who are part of the Spider Verse team. Um, I just think they're all really great. Peter Porker is one of the funniest characters I've ever seen in any Marvel film. Like, he is just. I'm sorry, but I think he is, he might be Rocket as to be one of my favorite, like, comedic characters. He is so funny. His design is so toony and, like, Porky Pig-like. It's so funny and just really appealing and great. And Penny is this, like, anime-ish character and it's just really fun and she's just lovable. She's just adorable as well, you know. And... Yeah, Spider Noir. It's just he kind of reminds me of Batman at times. You know, he's very Batman esque. You know, very dark and brooding, and just you know, I I, I just I just like all that. And Aunt May is kind of badass as well. She's got her own secret lair and all that lot. I thought, wow, they, wow, this is my favorite Aunt May by far in a long shot. You know. And I feel like these are probably my favorite versions of any of the characters in any Spider-Man movies, in my opinion, you know. They're just all so great and lovable and fantastic, you know. The villain as well is this hulking beast of a man. He is terrifying. And he's just one of those dudes you just do, you don't want to mess with this guy, you know, because he will destroy you and he, you see it and it's, it kind of really floored me, like, the things he does in this film, like, to people, it's like, oh my gosh, it's really pushing that PG rating, you know, and you kind of, like, feel, in a way, you kind of see why he's doing all this, you know, and it's briefly told in flash, not flashbacks, but kind of, like, very quick flashbacks, but it's done really well, it's not, like, full-on long flashbacks, it's very short, snappy, but you get what's happening, you know, and I think it was just done really damn well, you know, like, I absolutely loved it. All the other side characters are also great as well, like, Miles' dad, his uncle, like, I thought it was just great and likeable and, you know, and you get a lot of twists and turns with this film, which I really did like. I wasn't expecting this film to have 
twists and turns so to see it was really interesting and just remarkable and the writing is just done to a T like some of the dialogue and the writing and the oh my god like the, the writers did an excellent job on this you know just a really fun job doing this you know um in terms of my mixed aspects I don't have anything bad to say just with the cinema I was in like the audio didn't play that well but I got on blu-ray and it, it plays well really nicely um yeah, um, the only thing I didn't like about this film was that I was so damn salty we didn't get to see enough of Penny Parker, Spider Noir or Peter Porker. I love those characters so much, you know, I, I wanted more of them. I wanted so much more of those characters. I thought they were so great, you know. So I am looking forward to a sequel of this film. Like, give me a sequel now. It's a visual masterpiece. I feel like it's really changed. Like, I feel like this is definitely going to be a industry changer in my opinion you know definitely this movie blew so many people's breaths away to the point that even famous people celebrities even came out and given their reviews on it like tom holland saying that this was one of the coolest films he's ever seen chris pratt saying it was emotionally moving cutting edge progressive diverse funny meta action-packed silly visually stunning and a masterpiece uh, just wow like you just got a lot of people just like even Ryan Johnson said that this film will be an influential film and many other people as well you know and just just it just goes to show you how much this film really did like impact like I feel like this will definitely change like animation in a way like this is pushing animation to a new direction you know like seeing it because I don't know, like, I, I like what Pixar and Disney does, you know, with their, like, photorealistic looking 3D animated films, you know, like, I'm not talking about their remakes, I'm talking about Pixar's films, like, they kind of, they're very, they're starting to become more realistic in a way, and I feel like this one is, like, it's starting to be a bit more like how traditional animation was, you know, like, emphasising colours and, like, having that extreme like principles of animation like having more squash and stretching like better timing and just like a lot of really good stuff in my opinion you know like spider-man into the spider-verse is a visual masterpiece with a grand story and just fun lovable enjoyable relatable characters and it's a 10 out of 10 and an a star for me this might be one of the best if not the best spider-man films I have ever seen and I recommend you watching it you know like I didn't want to spoil it because I feel like you gotta go and watch it to really experience the magic and thank you for watching this review please like and share this video and comment down below and tell me what's your favorite spider-man flick this might be my fave but thank you for watching and as always a boy do the views signing out